Adams a block, the kicker to beat, inside of him, he's got the speed, he's going to go all the way. Pressure comes, they get to him, he's down back at the 22-yard line. No big rub. Block, it was blocked, touchdown Oregon! Oregon football with Mike Pilotti. And back to throw, Kelly off the plate, they shovel pass, it's a good one, right hand, five, three, touchdown! Hi, everyone, and welcome to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti, Joe John Sante, along with the head coach. And uh, Coach uh, Terrence Whitehead getting in the end zone right there, and the place was going crazy. Gave your chance, uh, team a chance to win the game, but uh, really red zone was the entire difference in this football game, wasn't it? Uh, the difference this year in our football team has been our inability on both sides of the ball to handle the red zone. We're not scoring enough. We're not keeping people out. Uh, we're not doing as good a job as we need to. I thought we gave great effort yesterday. I thought the fans were awesome. Austin Stadium was as alive a place as it's ever been and tremendously supportive. But we did not finish some plays, did not execute as well as we did. Played with great effort, probably a little bit too much emotional intensity early on. But uh, overall, Arizona State's a very good football team. Uh, we didn't quite finish a lot of things we started in this game, and it's difficult because we made it more uh, tougher on ourselves in terms of uh, the Pac-10 race. Now that you have some games under the belt, you can look at it. Can you pinpoint maybe what's going on red zone-wise? Is it execution, penalties, breakdowns, uh, not being aggressive enough? Can you pinpoint what it is? Uh, no. I, I'll look more at the films. I mean, I think it's been a combination of... Uh, you know, down there the field constricts. Mm -hmm. There's less area to cover, so coverage has changed a little bit. Sometimes it's blitz, sometimes it's a picket fence type defense. Uh, we just have to do a better job of executing. We're going to look at obviously the play calling down there. But again, at this point, uh, we were very good last week, very poor again this week, matching again against good teams what we've failed to do. Uh, and we haven't had the kicking game problems that we've had. It's been more now the offensive problems and the defensive problems. We're letting people score and they get down. We've got to make some stops down there, and we've got to find a way to get the ball in the end zone, not settle for field goals. And maybe how it played out in this game, Coach, was the, the situation that you really dominated the first half of play, yet you trailed, so they were able to dictate in the second half maybe a little more. And Would you say that's the case? I mean, your team really moved the ball. They had four yards of offense in the first quarter. Uh, I was very pleased with our defense and with our offense in terms, of, again, the game plan. But uh, once again, yards don't mean a lot. We had more yards, more first downs, all those type of things for the entire game. They had 90 yards in the first half total offense, completed three passes, unfortunately two for touchdowns. And again, on those two, we broke down in our coverage. We let them make easy plays, and that's frustrating because we played great defense, absolutely wonderful, fantastic defense against a great quarterback. But then on two plays that he can get in that red zone, we break down our coverage, let him score easily. And that, that's frustrating, and it's difficult because that takes away some of, the, some of the sting that we had in terms of that defensive stand. We needed to make make more plays on offense. We still need to find a way to get the ball down the field mm -hmm. vertically in the passing game. A combination of protection, combination of touch, combination of uh, our receivers getting clean, free down the field. And before we get to the highlights, real quick, one more quick question about the psyche of young men. I know there was so, I think we were talking about it after the game, when there are high expectations, sometimes the fall is a little bit harder for young men. How did you feel they took it last night? Do you feel that there's a resolve with this team as you look forward now to Washington State? I think there's a resolve. I think this football team is a great group of kids. And, I, and again, I think they were, uh, as I said last night, if you don't put something on the line, you, you don't hurt. And I, we hurt last night because we put it on the line, we tried, we didn't finish what we needed to do. I think they're a great group of kids. I think they're going to come back. We need to continue to do the drill. And I say that because it's meaning we're going to get better and get better and get better. Eliminate the penalties. Eliminate some of our, we had no turnovers last night, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Uh, we didn't get any turnovers either. We had chances a couple times. Obviously, balls in our hand, big play potential, and didn't quite take advantage of it. But again, I like this group of kids. We're going to find out tomorrow because, again, today's a day off. Uh, it sinks in, but kids are pretty resilient. And again, they realize, I think, how close we are to being a good football team. It's a couple plays either, either mm -hmm. way, here or there, and, and, it, and those things we just have to make. Yeah, it makes you wonder about maybe that kickoff return against uh, Indiana early and maybe an interception that could have been against... Uh, the game uh, against Arizona State yesterday, we'll take a look at that as we go to the highlights because it happened very early in the game. And really, it was a, a defensive battle, Coach, in the first quarter. But your team came out, lightning yellow on top, crowd into it, uh, great atmosphere under the lights. It was just a, a great place for college football. Awesome day. Awesome night. And again, just a great crowd. So you start out Whitehead for a yard here and uh, after a couple of plays. So wanted to run here on third and four. Kellen in the shotgun. 
and uh, steps up and he just gets past the line here. He actually it's a bad call. His mm -hmm. foot is behind the line. You have to touch across the line. He threw the ball and again, uh, I understand why they called it. It's an incorrect call. Well, the Arizona State coaches called the penalty because the flag did not come down until the coaches ran onto the field. So it was a very late call. Chris Solomona and then a big play in this game coming up right here as uh, Solomona makes the play. Walter looking on the out. Justin Finnessy. It is a touchdown almost. Another look at it, coach. Yeah, it's difficult. Great job by Chris Solomon. The first play batting that ball down here. Justin is playing the out route. Gets a great break on the ball. You can see the drop back route delivery by Andrew Walter. And again, he's in great position right there. Clean touch on the ball. Nothing but green in front of him. And unfortunately, just can't handle it. So it makes you wonder what the course of the game would have been. But every, like we talked about it before. You can never take a playoff. And you have to make the plays when the chance comes. And you can change the whole course of the football game. And uh, Trying to grind out the first down, Washington for a loss of two. And then out to the outside, here's Kenny Washington, a nice move and a gain of five. Yeah, making people miss. Again, their safety's a nice job in the first play, uh, coming down very quickly. Third and seven here, and incomplete to Dante Rosario. So uh, going to have to punt the ball after a short punt and a big return. Net of 14 on the punt. ASU going to go deep right away. We thought we'd see it early, and we did. We did, and again, we're in great shape here. Almost interception, P.I. on them. Great play by Marcus Benz. Again, another opportunity for us to catch that ball in our hands. And we do a great job of drilling us. We just have to be better getting a chance to take that ball away. Hakeem Hill for two yards. Ramon Reed on the stop of defense, bringing the pressure early on Andrew Walter. Pressure comes. They got it back at the 36-yard line. Nice call by the defensive staff and nice execution by Anthony Trucks in that defensive group. He's coming off the edge, strong side. She beats a man there and then just grabs a hold. And Andrew Walsh a big guy, 6'6", 230, 240, so it's not easy. We got him down there, huge play. Anthony Trucks, nice play there, and uh, the offense back with it. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. And one back, that's Dante Rosario, and back to throw, Clements. Throws a little screen, and it's a worker. Rosario, 30 down the sideline, and I think he might have stepped out of bounds on the first down, up at about the 30, or rather 44. A little misdirection screen to Dante. Uh, nice job of setting it up. This he has great patience right there. Kellen, nice throw, rackable throw, which allows him to run with the catch. Nice block out in front of my Nick Stites right here. Just a little push on that man. Dante running down that sideline. Does a nice job of tight roping that sideline. Uh, gets drilled pretty good there by safety, but again, that ball's way out of bounds. Took a big hit, and uh, Coach, that was the only time that Dante touched the ball all game long. I know you like to see him get more touches than that. Yeah, we'd like to. We had a couple opportunities on pass plays uh, later on, just didn't get it to him. And then third and four incomplete to Demetrius Williams, so it's turning into a back-and-forth defensive struggle here in the first quarter. And uh, then Jerry Matson putting the heat on Walter here. Early, you got to him. Yeah, we got some pressure on him, do a jo nice job here, hang, forcing him to throw the ball out of the pocket. Jerry had the opportunity a lot of times to read a, it's a read blitz on the run. Then Akeem Hill for four yards. They almost exclusively ran the ball at the middle. They did not go to the outside hardly at all. Well, Hakeem is a physical back. He, he's not a speed back, and so the best thing was a downhill pass from inside the tackle. Six punts in the first quarter. Ducks put together a big drive, though, after that. Started at the 30, Clemens to Whitehead for nine yards, and then Terrence Whitehead with authority for five more. Looking good. Terrence is, has, has improved dramatically each of the last two weeks. He's just becoming a better football player, better back, running with more power, more authority, breaking tackles, and just stepping through things. It's amazing. That was Keith Allen for 12 on first down to the 44. Then after an incompletion to Williams for three, he sets up a fourth and short, very short, and uh, get the sneak there and didn't get a great spot. No, we got a horrible spot. He made it by about two feet and they gave it to us by about six inches. But that's okay. We got the first got down. Got the first down. That's what matters. So the drive is going on and uh, zero to zero. A hundred yards of offense for Oregon. Four yards for ASU. They have six passing yards minus two rushing. At this point, hey, moving the ball, confident domination in the first quarter. Tremendous job by our defense. Tremendous job both in coverage and pressure on the quarterback. Great job by our offense keeping the football. We started, we sputtered a little bit early, but we're moving the ball now. And I thought we had some momentum certainly going into the second quarter. Coming up, the uh, defensive battle in the first kind of gives way to a little openness in the second for the offenses. Some points start to get on the board. That and more coming up next as both teams put together some long drives on Oregon football with Mike Pilotti right after this.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti. We're going to get right to the second quarter highlights, and it was a quarter that uh, back and forth in this one. Oregon starting with the football on the move with this drive. They start out with a third and six in Arizona State territory. Under his center. And we'll go back to throw. Straight drop. Crusher steps up. Going to throw it. Got a man open, and it is caught. First down and out of bounds. Terrence Whitehead. Nice play calling again, uh, getting a one-on-one -on -one matchup with our tailback and a linebacker. Uh, Kellen, perfect throw, nice touch on this to Terrence White open down that sideline, carries it down to about the seven-yard line. Terrence Whitehead good out of the backfield as well, having really an all-pack 10 years so far, doing it all. And then Kenny Washington comes in and uh, maybe trying to pound it in here, and then Washington just picks up a couple of yards. Tough going down here. That's a fast defense. Yeah, it's a very good defense. And again, we don't uh, sustain a block long enough here. We get a chance to scramble a little bit. This is a screen, so Kellen very fortunately burns the ball outside. And again, he was outside the pocket, so it's not grounded. The ASU coaches are about 10 yards on the field there, trying to get the call like they did earlier, but not this time. So it breaks down, and Jared Siegel comes in, and a short field goal, 15 plays, 79 yards. Six and a half minutes, but just three points. Yeah, nice to get on the scoreboard first. Nice to get on the scoreboard, but again, not good enough. We wanted a touchdown. Doesn't take long for ASU to respond. Akeem Hill just bottled up in the first quarter, but breaks one up the middle, 27 yards, and then face mask as well, so 15 more on it. Maybe a five yard yeah, on that. Yeah, should have been a five yard, not a 15. Yeah, unfortunately, not a very good view for the official. Then Walter on the scramble for nine yards, and uh, after Hill lost a yard, it sets up a third and two. They did this all game, third and short. They weren't looking for a first down. They were looking for the touchdown, and they got it right here. Yeah, we, we again blew this coverage, miscommunicated our adjustment, and had nobody in the middle. Supposed to be his own defense, and it's unfortunate we give them. Play great defense and then let them have a big play. Jamal Lewis, 22 yards on the touchdown, five plays, 80 yards, and uh, trailing for the first time in the, the game, and Whitehead for 11 yards. And we'll look at it again, coach, because I just I can't be more impressed. I'm sure you can't either with what Terrence Whitehead's doing. No, I'm just so pleased. He's showing great quickness, speed, agility, elusiveness here in the open. Makes a guy completely miss, steps over him, gets 11 yards, a, a carry right there. Nice job. Tough runner, so that's a first down for Oregon, and then. Terrence Whitehead going to get the football again, this time for eight more yards, running the ball effectively. But then a personal foul at the end of this one sends it back. Yeah, not very smart. Trying to make a play and blocking late behind the ball is absolutely forbidden. So you back it up 15 yards. Kellen takes this one himself. Clemens under center now. Wide outs are two to the right, and he'll go back right to throw. Set up. Nobody there. He's going to run. Got some room. Cuts it outside. Still on his feet. He's going to get to the 40. Close to the first down markers and out of bounds. Up to the 35-yard line. Pretty excited and with good reason. That's a great play. And again, they're dropping into coverage. Uh, we have a semi-max protection, which allows him to look the field over. Steps up, finds nobody there, takes off, cuts back against the grain, makes the guy miss there. Does a nice job picking up and making up for the huge penalty we just suffered. They said after the game they weren't prepared for his scrambling, but I'm not sure why. He's a great scrambler, and he's shown that every game. Yeah, we've talked about his success is going to come partially due to his agility and his speed. Kenny Washington then for five yards. Nice little cut out there and falls forward for some extra yardage. And then Clemens for three and an Arizona State personal foul coming up here right there on the face yeah. mask penalty. Yeah, they, they got that one. It was a valid. They jerked the helmet. Uh, 15 actually was half the distance to the goal. So you put it at the 13-yard line. Ducks try to push it in from there. Whitehead for two, running the football, and then uh, second and eight coming up, and uh, going to try to run it again. Yeah, they, they were playing soft. They're playing a picket fence defense. The mm -hmm. trouble is there's just not as much depth for the safety, so they're up there in the running game, too. And when you say picket fence, explain that a little bit more. For us well, they're, they're playing somewhat of a zone. They're playing off in the middle distance, say, 7, 10 yards off. They don't have to worry about deep passes. Nothing can go over their head. And so they're playing soft, waiting, and they can play run or pass from there. Okay, so Siegel gets the field goal, 7-6. And those kicks were very good, straight, solid. So Jared Siegel back on his form. And after that field goal, the team's played a... Well, a little back and forth. They just get some down towards the field. That was incomplete, but uh, penalty moves it down, and uh, they're in business again. Yeah, they call the roughing the passer on us, and uh, Robbie goes in, actually pulled off. It was a very unfortunate call. I, again, tough to agree with. And they get the touchdown, so it just didn't take long at all for them to respond to that. Right down the field they go. It was two plays, 39 yards, 18 seconds on their drive. It's a big contrast to what you were doing today, controlling the ball. Absolutely. And again, 
Uh, we did not do a very good job here at the end. Uh, protection didn't hold up. Kellen, I think, did not make a great decision on whether to get rid of the ball or hold the ball there. Here on third down, just trying to protect it. It was third and 27, so Whitehead for seven yards on that play. And then Dittman to punt. This is a great punt. Uh, and then maybe a mental mistake here, Coach, because the ball's in full motion and it gets down right here. You might have picked up another 10, 15 yards out of that. Absolutely. We've talked about that. That's a fifth-year senior. And, uh, again, you can't make those kind of mistakes. Great punt. It could have put him right down at the one-yard line or something. Which really changes it because with a minute 20 left, they run the ball. You still have three timeouts left. You might have had a chance to get the ball with great field position, maybe on the 50 with 40 seconds, a chance to get some points. Yeah, that's true. We, and I considered calling timeouts there and decided that, again, we would save it just to a one-possession game. So they go to the locker room, still a very winnable game, and 14-6 uh, to 6 at the break. And what did you say to the kids when you got into the locker room? Well, I told them that uh, it's unfortunate because we had spoiled so far a great defensive effort with two broken coverages, allowed them two touchdowns, and offensively that we needed to get touchdowns, not field goals. And we needed to not have breakdowns on special teams. Special teams breakdowns gave, two, gave them great field position. We can't do that. I'm, I'm disappointed as probably as much in our special teams as anything we're doing this year because it has been one of those hidden pluses for us that is not as big a factor this year in our success. Three completions for Andrew Walter in the first half. And if I would have said that to you before the game, you would have taken that and thought the Ducks would have had a big lead, maybe. Absolutely. I, and again, I think, I, I wouldn't have said big lead because I knew this was going to be more of a defensive mm -hmm. ball game than people thought. I was pleased with our defense. I think our guys were playing really hard. And again, we had to, to avoid the miscommunication problems that caused the, the secondary adjustment that let them free. We also needed to convert third downs and get the ball in the end zone. 14-6 at the half as we go to the break. And since we're talking about the break, a nice break in the NFL schedule for some former Ducks. Gives them a good chance to come back and experience the electricity of a night game at Austin Stadium once again. Keenan Howry, one of the most popular Ducks ever. We'll hear from him that and more as we go to the half next on Oregon Football with Mike Pilato. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I'm Michael Burke. There's nothing quite like being down on the field for a night game at Austin Stadium, or any game for that matter. So much fun that whenever former Ducks in the NFL get the chance, they flock to the stadium to take in another game. A bye week in the schedule for the Minnesota Vikings allowed for such a trip to the West for former Duck star Keenan Howry, back in the stadium where he created so many great memories. He was joined by Michael Fletcher, who's turned into one of the best defensive players in the Canadian Football League. The guys said they love being back at Austin Stadium, and like all of us, a longing for those college days. It feels great to come back and you know, support the Ducks, come out here in Oregon and just kind of just hang out and watch the game for the first time ever. <laughs> I had my first touchdown against ASU night game, you know, then my, uh, my junior year I had four touchdowns against them on the night game. So, I mean, these games here are special. I mean, it always seems like we play Arizona State at night. And we certainly wish Keenan and Michael the best of luck as they continue their professional careers. Which brings us to this week's internet poll. There's no question that Keenan Howery is one of the best punt returners to have ever played in the Pac-10 Conference. Who can forget that return to beat OSU in the 2001 Civil War? Now, though, in the current day of the Pac-10, who do you think is the best player overall in the conference? Lots of good ones, to be sure. And you can start it with Reggie Bush at USC, Aaron Rodgers, the Cal quarterback, ASU's quarterback Andrew Walter, Maurice Drew, the fine tailback for UCLA, or Haloti Nada, Oregon's defensive lineman. Go to chambersports.com to cast your vote, or you can visit us at kzi.com, the flagship website. Click on sports. We'll have results next week on the show. Now, as you know, here all year long at the half, we're taking you behind the scenes of an Oregon football game, and one aspect of the football Saturday that we couldn't do without is duck vision. We've been all around the country, and no big board production is better than what we see every Saturday at the stadium, whether it's firing up the crowd before the game or showing a crucial replay. Getting it to the board for 58,000 fans to enjoy is much harder than it looks. Nicola Beta has more. It's larger than life. Replays, fans, Oregon football. We're talking about Duck Vision. The Autzen Stadium experience wouldn't be the same without it. But have you ever wondered how it all works? How do you get from here to here? It might be more complicated than you think. Let's go behind the scenes and take a little trip. We first have to leave Austin Stadium and travel five miles north to Chambers Media Center to the Duck Vision Control Room. 
It's in this room where what you see on the big screen is put into play. We have an, an operation that we're in a facility above, that we're five miles away from the, the stadium and everything is coming back and forth. We're going back and forth via fiber or, you know, little strands of glass. I told you it was complicated. The video travels from the camera through the cable and must make a trip to the Chambers Media Center. Up on one of these preview monitors, then back again to Onsen. Now that's impressive. What's also impressive, the amount of staff required to do just that. There are 30 in all, including cameramen, engineers, producers, directors, stage managers, and four cameras. In camera, which is on the center of the field, or actually way up uh, high up on the roof, that follows the game. Then we have one in the end zone, and then we have what we call the near side camera that shoots the game uh, action. And then we on the far side, or on the north side of the field, over by where the ducks are, we have what we call our fan cam. And they do it all, of course, for the fans. The, the enjoyment that uh, they they get to see is themselves on camera. I mean, it's, it's our goal to, to show them a replay and then also at the same time, or immediately thereafter, put, put the, a shot of a fan on the screen. So the next time you see yourself on Duck Vision, you may think twice about what it took to get your screaming face on the big screen. For Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti, I'm Nicola Beta. Thanks so much, Nicole, and thanks to everyone who makes Duck Vision a possibility each Saturday at Austin. All right, when we come back, the Ducks continue to chip away, controlling the football, working the offense down the field, and giving themselves a chance to win or at least tie the game in the second half, the third quarter, and much, much more coming up next on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Back to the show, everyone, as we go to the third quarter. Oregon trailing this one 14 to 6 as we get into the third period of play at Austin Stadium. The fans all ducked out and making lots of noise on a spectacular evening at Austin Stadium. And, Coach, I thought this was an unusual quarter because time just rolled away. It really shortened the game down. Yeah, I think there was a, a lot of runs, a lot of plays inbounds, you know, that, that kept the clock running. ASU uh, Walter to Hill for seven yards, and then this is a big one. Hill for 56. He hadn't done much all game, but this is a big boost all the way to the Oregon 12-yard line. Yeah, we misplay this. Uh, our safety and corner uh, get uh, tripped up a little bit, and we allowed the big run, which was unfortunate. And then to Zach Miller, this took it down to the one-yard line, and then Akeem Hill is going to take it over here. Tough running, but he gets it across the line for the touchdown. So just like that, a big drive for them, down 15. And you get a great drive, but it does come at a cost because it took a real long time to do it. Yeah, long drives, and again, uh, when you're behind, they can they can take uh, time away from you in terms of the catch-up time. Clemens, 11 yards to the Oregon 29, and now he's going to go back to the air and to Demetrius Williams. Offset of the backfield is the lone back, and Clemens will go back to throw. Straight drop, little pump fake, pressure comes, gets away from it though. Looking downfield and throws it open and caught first down. Demetrius Williams. Down at the Arizona State 47-yard line. Nice play by Kellen. We actually had Tim Day open, wide open, right down the middle of the field. That's his first read. You see him right there. But at that point, we get the rush coming off the edge. He's got to bring his eyes down. So now he pulls the ball down. Tim becomes covered. Does a nice job of the outlet to Demetrius, who taps the feet down for a big play. Takes it to the Arizona State 47. Demetrius with four catches. Clemens for uh, seven yards on the scramble. Demetrius injured his shoulder or arm later in the game. Is he okay? Or how's he looking? Yeah, it's got a sore shoulder, slight separation. And mm -hmm. I think he's going to be okay. Tremendous running right there by Terrence and by Kellen, making the linebacker in space miss. He's going to be doing a great job. That was a gain of eight. Here are seven more. Yeah, just, you know, and again, running through tackles. I don't, you can't bring him down. you got to grab and hold up and wait for the second guy. Little throwback screen to Tim Day for five yards. His only catch of the day as well on the screen pass. So two guys that we've seen seen the ball a lot, Tim Day and Rosario, each with one catch. Yeah, we need to get them going more. Whitehead for three more yards, and then after another rush for no game, it's a big fourth and two at the Arizona State 13-yard line. Clements has him up. Two receivers right, two to the left. Back to throw. The throw is out, it is caught, and it's going to be very close. I think he's got the first down. Again, uh, choose to make this play. We had two options here, and Keith comes wide open his first option. Throw the ball to him. Gets that ball on that right shoulder and again gets a spot. Should have gotten it probably a little bit better. Uh, could have rolled off of that guy, but on that play, you want to make sure we get the first down. Out of 
the eye. Two wide outs to the right. And back to throw. Kevin off the plate fake. Shovel pass. It's a good one. Whitehead, five, three, touchdown. Terrence Whitehead. Great call by Andy Ludwig and the staff. Great execution by Kellen and Terrence. You can see they set up the play fake. Looks like a play action pass. Terrence slips inside, drops the ball off. Kellen puts it perfect. He hides behind the one blocker, gets a good block there from Ian Noso down the field and steps in the end zone. So 15 plays, but nine minutes off the clock to pull within eight points. And you look at the drive chart, Coach. Oregon had four drives, 10 plays or more. Two that were 15 plays. Arizona State just had one drive more than 10 plays. So you really put it together and control the ball a lot of this game. We did. Unfortunately, we allowed them to score on some big field position turnover changes, and that, that was a difference. And again, we couldn't afford to take that much time when you're behind because we still need to make up that two-point conversion at some point. Uh, but please, again, that we had momentum. I really felt we were going to win the football game. I told the players on the sideline, both offense and defense, we're going to win this football game. We're going to win it easy, but let's start right now. Certainly the defense gave Oregon the chance to do just that with a couple of chances to get down the field and maybe tie it. Fourth quarter, Ducks trying to hold on the defensive side and the offense with, like I said, a couple of chances with the ball. Down eight and a quarter, looking for a little odds and magic. But on this night, it was not meant to be. Fourth quarter, plus we'll hear from the Ducks as Oregon football with Mike Bellotti continues right after this. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Here we go. Fourth quarter action. Oregon and Arizona State at the stadium. Chances to maybe come back and win this football game. And, Coach, as you said before we went to the break, you felt confident the Ducks were going to win this one. I did. I felt we had momentum on both sides of the football. We just scored on that drive, had done a great job on defense. Get a huge sack right here uh, from Devin Long. And, again, great pressure. Devin Long getting in there, and uh, I thought maybe the pressure dropped off a little bit in the third quarter, but Devin Long, I mean, what a great way to start the quarter. Yeah, and again, we, we brought a full blitz, and he's actually the recipient of getting the quarterback flushed out his way. He does a great job of finishing the play. And I saw that ball flying out there, and I'm thinking, here goes the ball, but he was able to hold on to it. Big senior quarterback, make sure to protect the football, and uh, third and 24, and if they get 26, a first down. It really didn't affect the game too much, but it was kind of deflating. It, it was tough. That's a great play and execution by them, though. In all, in all honesty, that's a great pass and catch. Defense stopped them after that, so uh, they go for the 49-yard field goal. He exploded this ball off his foot. That ball landed in the stands from 49, but had, no good. Yeah, he has a great leg. Uh, the first kickoff, same thing. That one, I, I thought the same thing. That ball did explode. Luckily, it was wide left. Wide left and no good. So Oregon now with a chance for the first time in the second half to maybe tie the football game and just could not get it going offensively. No, uh, our receiver that time got held, but it's very difficult to see inside. On third and 12, Clemens trying to get the ball, lets it go down, picks it back up. So uh, that was a quick three and out, not the kind of possession you wanted. And then you go to the punt, and uh, then you don't get the kind of punt you want either. So, uh, you know, there's a great chance. And we talk about possessions that maybe define the season. That might be one of them. Inconsistent field position caused by special teams. And again, we did not get take advantage of that opportunity. You're right, offensively. It's a 26-yard punt. And uh, defense gives the Ducks, though, another chance. Andrew Walker sacked for a loss of one. That was David Fatete. Marcus Bins. Great play by Marcus. Drops off. Has an interception in his hands. Again, uh, it's a nice play to knock it down. We obviously would love to have had the ball right there. So you get it back. Another chance now to tie the game. Whitehead pushes for a yard on first down. Second nine. And Clemens with a lot of time. Had a man and just threw it too far. Overthrown. Uh, just a little over anxious. And then Clemens again here on third down. And this one is knocked away. And it was oh so close, but a good play by their defense. Yeah, did a nice job. We need to snatch that ball and bring it in. Since they stopped you two straight three and outs, I thought that kind of gave their whole team a little bit of lift. And the momentum kind of swung there, and their offense really used that, I thought, to get down the field. I, I agree. That, that was a, probably a turning point in terms of we could have seized the momentum, really done something with it, and did, did not uh, do that. Zach Miller, 27 yards, and then uh, Richardson to the Oregon 19-yard line, and then Hakeem Hill for a pair of four-yard uh, four yard runs. I, I'm amazed that he did what he did with that cast on his arm. Yeah, he, you know, he was their starter last year after. I mean, he's a good running back, strong and physical, and he didn't, they didn't ask him to do too much, just run straight ahead for the most part. They get the ball down there again, Hill just putting his head down and making it work, and he gets all the way down to the one-yard line, and then 
On third and goal, Walter to Rudy Burgess out of the backfield. And the touchdown, 28-13 at that point. Yeah, nice job by them. We should have recognized number three is not going to be a fullback lead back. But he, they bring him in for receiving situation. Ducks not giving up. Opening up uh, the playbook, Clemens to Colvin, 27 yards. It's the longest play of the day for Oregon, so Cam Colvin getting some action. Nice catch. Yeah, nice catch and good throw. Uh, Kel, we got a pretty good start here. He's working the ball down the field, getting it out of bounds, getting the first downs. Maxwell for seven, and then uh, for 16 here on the scramble. Uh, apologize for that. He throws to the outside. Maxwell for a few more yards here. He picked up a scramble as well. And... Uh, you felt like you're going to take it in here, maybe get a chance to get the onside kick, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, we wanted to. Nice job by Kellen on the scramble right there. Uh, had already had the onside kick team ready to go. Really did assume that in that, when you need two, you have to score and you have to go for it. Nice catch, nice concentration by Demetrius. This is where he hurts his shoulder. Uh, it's a partial separation. Again, this unfortunately would have been a touchdown, and, and uh, we can't pick up the blitzing corner. Just tips Kellen's foot to then allow him to finish that throw. Would have been touchdown to Tim Day. That was a fourth and three, so that is the ball game. Shaking hands. Wish Coach Cutter luck the rest of the way. They got a big win in a couple of weeks against USC. The Ducks have Washington State. Not ready to fold the tent yet, though. Seven games left to make something of this season. It hurts. I mean, when you lay it out there and, and you, you know you don't win the game, it hurts. It's tough to deal with, but you just got to keep your head up, stay positive. I mean, we're all. We're all feeling the same way. We all need to, you know, come back and it starts tomorrow. Um, you know, keeping our heads up and, and, and working towards, you know, a, a better a better week next week. I think that um, Arizona State was a real good team. We gave up a, a lot of things that we normally don't do. I mean, we beat ourselves on three of the touchdowns on defense. They didn't beat us. We cover. We have this guy cover. This guy cover. This guy cover. Minor communication error, and they throw it to a guy that's wide open. I mean, it's not like you're, uh, uh, you know, beating people for touchdowns. It's not happening like that. And then we had some opportunities that we squandered off. So, I mean, I'm not going down right Arizona State and say that they're not a good team because they walked out here with the victory in our house. So, they're definitely a good team, but they were easy to beat a good team also. Though, so that. Today, I thought that we had a good chance to go in there and establish something. And, uh, and it looked all right early, and we needed, we needed to gain ground in the second half and not lose ground. And so, that was disappointing. So I'm not going to give up on this team. I still, I see a great team right now, so we just need to put everything together, and, th and uh, good things will come. It came in with big expectations. Everybody worked hard in the summer, the winter, and spring. And we just got to find some way to get us back and get this thing back on. We never dream of starting a back 10 on one, um, but you know that's that's what we've got right now. We've got to. Uh, We've got to regroup now. Get ready to go up to Pullman for another night game. So, you know, that's 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 all we can do right now. We don't have a choice. It's either that or fold up our tent. We're definitely not going to do that. And coach, you recovered from a tough stretch last year, and uh, no reason to think you can't do it again this year. No, I I, I like our kids. I've said that all along. I like their attitude. Uh, we fought hard yesterday, did not win. Uh, I think our kids are willing to go back to work and understand we just dug, we got to dig a little deeper. Uh, we poured a little bit of dirt on top of ourselves. We got to climb out of it. And again, uh, I like the group. I like their attitude. I think we're going to be okay. Arizona State's a good team too. Yeah. I mean, don't want to not, they give you a lot of credit. They played a good football game in a tough place. Yeah, absolutely. So good job for Arizona State. Congratulations to them. But the Ducks are going to come back and take on the Washington State Cougars. A chance to get back on track, to get to one and one in the pack 10 if they can get the victory. The Cougars 3-1 and one heading into uh, the game against Oregon. They've had some miracle wins as well. We'll talk about the Cougars and the Pac-10 when Oregon football with Mike Bellotti continues right after this. Welcome back to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. We'll run you through a couple of the games from the Pac-10 on Saturday and started out with UCLA and San Diego State. Pick this one up, first quarter action, no score for Carl Durrell's team when Maurice Drew, well, he gives them a score. Look at that spin move and he is off to the races. 60 plus yards for Drew. Of course, he had five touchdowns, 300 plus yards against UW and he gets the Bruins on the board, 161. Those his numbers in yardage on Saturday. Third quarter, UCLA puts it away. Drew Olson, touchdown pass for Tad Perry. Bruins win, 33-10. In court, Vallis, the Beavers got hammered by Jeff Tedford's Cal Bears. Terrell Williams on the halfback option, and it's 79 yards for Chase Lyman. His second of three first quarter touchdowns. Cal had a 21-7 lead. Lyman had only five catches, but three of them went for scores. Later on, following a Derek Anderson interception deep in 
OSU territory, Aaron Rodgers hits Chris Mandarino for the short touchdown on what was a long day for the Beavs. 49-7 the final score. OSU now 1-4 overall, 0-2 in the Pac-10. Joe Coach, back to you. All right, thanks very much. Also in the Pac-10, Washington losing uh, to Stanford. So Washington is 0-4, so the conference is starting to shake out a little bit. And Washington State, Coach, they're opportunistic. They're 3-1. and one. They've won a couple of games that could have gone either way. They also, the one they lost could have gone either way as well against Colorado. So I don't know if I have a handle yet on this football team. I'm not sure I do either. I haven't had a chance to look at it much on film. Bill Dover's done a great job coaching, taking over that team and that program. Uh, they always have a lot of fireworks on offense. Uh, they play fast on defense. And uh, I think they're very well coached, as I said. Back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. Always fun to play in Martin Stadium. And uh, Jason Hill, he has really emerged this year. A sophomore big play guy, kind of following that tradition of great receivers that they've got. And Josh Schwager's getting him the ball. Yeah, Schwager's a big physical uh, quarterback. And again, they're making plays, moving the pocket a little bit, doing things they need to do to win. And they like the deep ball. We've seen that for yeah. years and years. They haven't changed at all, even with yeah. the new coach. No, they're going to go downtown. Defensively, uh, they've been able to get it done as well in some crucial points, and uh, they played well at Arizona. Adam Johnson with the tackle there. Will Durding, again, linebackers with good speed. Will Durding is an excellent, excellent football player. He's playing with a cast on his hand, I believe, and just uh, continues to make plays. That was a big play. They got to beat Arizona when Arizona could have kneeled on the ball, but they created it, and big job there. And the special teams, how about this punt? Kyle Basler had an 86-yard punt against Arizona. It would have been more, but it went into the end zone. It's unbelievable. It would have been a 95-yard punt. He's got an amazing leg. He's the best punter in the conference and was last year also. So special teams, Coach, you talked about it uh, before and uh, you know what your team has to do against Washington State and, and uh, that you haven't been happy with special teams. So when you go into practice this week, are you looking at a few different things? Special teams, a little well, more emphasis there? We'll have more competition uh, for the coverage positions. We'll look at competition at all the positions on special teams. I really believe that that's the case. We did a good job of eliminating turnovers, but you got you can't just do that. We have to now finish things. We've got to improve in the red zone, both offensively and defensively, and special teams has to become a positive factor for us. Will that also mean at punter? Will you reopen that job? Uh, or you stay possibly. I, David Dittman, I was not pleased overall. I think, again, he's better than that. I told... Uh, Paul Martinez to warm up and be ready to go, and, and then I think uh, Dave got that 57-yarder off. So we'll see. It's it's a consistency factor I'm looking for, and, and uh, we just don't have it yet. And also, as the season's gone along, you'd like to get uh, Dennis Dixon into the ball game for a series or two. Would you work on that this week, or is that not a consideration? Possibly. Again, I, I we'll look at the way practice goes and what things that Washington State throws at us. But mm -hmm. I, I think it's a possibility. Again, uh, I'll sit down and talk with the staff about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Washington State, 2 o'clock kickoff. Not going to be on TV. Uh, both sides had to agree on that. And tough trip. Got to go to Spokane as well. Yeah. Lewiston yeah. Airport's got some construction so that would have meant a, I know you don't like getting back at five in no, the morning no 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 I prefer not to <laughs> yeah so this is gonna work out a lot better for the Ducks gives them a better chance to win this week and the following week as well when we return one of the guys that really does give Oregon a great chance to win Dante Rosario one of the guys that's just been steady and strong for this Oregon Duck team and really that's a product of his upbringing a small town guy from the state of Oregon staying home and doing a good job for his Ducks we've got that and more coming up on Oregon football with Michael Lottie. Welcome back, everyone. As you know, many of the great Oregon teams of the past were built on homegrown players, guys who grew up right here in the state of Oregon and made the choice to stay here to be a part of their home state team. Guys like Chad Cota and Chris Miller and, of course, Joey Harrington. All three of them ended up in the NFL. And there's another homegrown guy who appears like he's going to follow in their footsteps. From humble beginnings in the small, dusty town of Dayton into one of the most popular ducks. He's one of those guys known by just one name alone, Dante. Here's Scott Phillips. Kellen steps up, wants to throw it, he's got him there, he's got it, Rosario, touchdown! Dante Rosario from Dayton, Oregon, thank you, Dayton High School. Dayton, Oregon, home of the 2002 state champion Dayton Pirates, thanks in part to Dante Rosario. The Ducks sophomore left quite an impression on this small town during his high school career, and he continues to impress in his second year with the Ducks. Leading the team in touchdowns and receptions, it's no surprise to those who knew him when. He's always had good hands, and he's been a good blocker and a good runner, so I figured he'd fit right in. I do expect it for myself. I didn't expect really that it would happen, but 
I do expect that if the ball's thrown to me and I'm put in a position to make a play, then I expect myself to make a play. But behind the 6'4 frame and winning smile lies a painful past. In December 2001, Dante's mother lost her battle with cancer, leaving a husband, three children, and a void in Dante's life that is still felt today. My mom passed away, and I just kind of saw not just football, but everything I did, was doing in my life as a different perspective. His mother left instructions for the two boys, you know, just telling them to pick it up and do your best and do what's right and really work on your schoolwork. And, and that's kind of when I decided that football is what I wanted to do. I mean, she always, like, was on me about, like, do your best in school, do your best in sports, do your best in whatever you do. And he did just that. Following his mom's death, Dante led Dayton to state championships in basketball and football. He became the only in-state player signed by the Ducks in 2003. Unheard of for a 2A school. He could have chose to play at a bigger school, like nearby McMinnville, but... I grew up there, and I went to school from, like, kindergarten up with the same people. So you, I kind of like made a bond with them, like they're my best friends and so it's kind of hard just to like leave all that, just to go to a bigger school to do sports. So it was kind of like that and I saw it as like if I was really good enough, it didn't really matter where I played at. And for a small town guy, Eugene's a pretty big place. But the tight-knit football community made it much easier for him to make the decision to become a duck. Coach Vladi told us, you'll leave college and some of the best friends that you'll ever have in life are from the team that you play on, so, and I really believe in them. And now, four games into his sophomore season, he finds himself at the center of a team trying to return to the Rose Bowl, and continuing to find inspiration in the words his mother left him. She kind of made little uh, notes, or letters, actually, for us, and just kind of um, telling us how we should go on, and it wasn't anything new, because it was stuff that she was telling us from day one, so, but it was, it was kind of nice to hear, you know, one last time. For Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti, I'm Scott Phillips. Well, that little imprint may be worth something someday, and uh, great to see Dante stay at home, come to Oregon, doing a great job for you. Yeah, I think that imprint is worth something already, to tell you yeah. the truth, but he's a great young man, a great football player. Hey, Coach, good luck at Washington State. Big game coming up. Yeah, a lot thank of you. I think a lot of fans are going to be ready for your team to get back on board against the Cougars. A lot of fans on their way up. Game time, 2 o'clock in Pullman. Coach, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Thanks, we'll see you next week wrapping up another one here on Oregon Football with Mike Pilate. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.